And we are live. Thank you so much for joining this live session today. Um, this is the Inclusion Week at UNIBE. Can you believe this? It's been four years. This is the fourth time we um, host this event at UNIBE. And evidently, this time is the at home edition. This is part of the initiatives from the UNESCO Chair on Social and Academic Inclusion for People with Disabilities and Special education needs. Um, it's conducted by the Office of the Dean of Students and the School of Psychology from the Universidad Iberoamericana in Santo Domingo. So during these two days, and by that I mean June 25th and June 26th, we will have these live sessions with professionals from multiple backgrounds to talk about inclusion, diversity, to bring awareness, share up-to-date information and experiences about the topic of inclusion. So if you want to participate on this lecture series, you can click the links down below. It has all the information you need to join us, or you can follow us on social networks, Unive en Línea. My name is Laura Sanchez, and I will moderate this session for you. And today I am delighted to present our first guest. Her name is Dr. Anna odrwood Coates, who is the chairholder of the UNESCO Janusz Korczak Chair in Social Pedagogy from the Maria Grzegorzewska University in Poland. Dr. odrwood Coates has a master's in sociology from the University of Gdansk and a doctorate program, a, pro, um, a doctorate degree on politics and women's studies from the same university. So today, Dr. odrwood Coates will give us an overview of the policies and practices of inclusion in Poland. And I'm going to ask you a favor. If you have any questions while um, she's presenting, please write your comments um, in the comment section. And I am not sure where the comment section is. It's this way because I don't know what's left or right in the screen. But just go to the comment section and write your questions there. So without further ado, Dr. Odrwood Coates, this virtual podium is yours. Thank you ever so much for having me uh, at, at this uh, afternoon uh, at UNIBE. Um, I, um, I communicate from Warsaw, so I'll take you first for a virtual tour to Warsaw to tell you a few words about our university and the UNESCO Janusz Korczak Chair. Our university uh, is the first pedagogical establishment in Poland uh, interested in uh, children um, with special educational needs and children with disabilities, established in 1922 by our patron Maria Grzegorzewska, who was the first person in Poland to think about special education, about uh, preparing uh, social educators, special educators, and working with uh, teachers and with families to support inclusion, full inclusion and participation of children and people with disabilities. And this tradition remains till nowadays. We are a leading facility in Poland conducting research in this area. Uh, the university uh, has the Janusz Korczak UNESCO chair. Uh, Janusz Korczak worked with Maria Grzegorzewska. He was a pedagogue and a pediatrician interested in children's rights, uh, the right to inclusion, the right to participation, the right to education. Uh, so these two great traditions uh, are the foundation for my today's presentation that will mainly pertain to uh, the policy and the practice uh, in the Polish context in terms of inclusion of children with disabilities and special educational needs. So I will start with uh, some years ago uh, when Poland went through a transition uh, from communism to a democratic state. So there was a systemic tra transition in 1989 uh, when Poland remained under the influence of Western uh, policy and the Declaration of Human Rights and the Convention on the Rights of the Child. And I will try to uh, share some uh, slides with you to make it a little bit more uh, interactive, I hope. I hope it works. Just go up there. I hope you can see the slides. Um, I'll try to put my uh, video back on. Uh, one moment. Need to move things around to see it. Okay. 
Okay, I hope it works. Okay, so uh, this is uh, just uh, the title of my presentation for today. And uh, I will move on to the context uh, of the policy that we uh, embraced in the recent years. So uh, there is some uh, influence on our policy from the European Union as well as uh, the uh, the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Human Rights Declaration. Uh, the EU policy, especially pertaining to the Charter of Rights for Persons with Disabilities, that was um, ratified in 1997. It had a great impact on policy implementation in Poland uh, and has covered all the basic documents by UN, EU and the Polish Constitution. Polish constitution clearly prohibits discrimination on any grounds and states that public authorities are to ensure special health care for children and persons with disabilities. That's the article 68 of Polish constitution and to provide assistance to persons with disabilities to ensure subsistence and facilitate adaptation uh, to work and social communication. Uh, Poland is a hub for development of children's rights uh, from the eastern side of Europe uh, that is reflected in the Article 72 of the Constitution guaranteeing children's rights to protection against violence, cruelty, exploitation and depravity and gives priority to the views of the child. In fact, Poland one was one of the first countries that uh, established a special uh, position in government, the Ombudsman for Children's Rights, who is also a minister in, in our government, who provides special care and assistance to all children and especially children with disabilities and special educational needs. Uh, um, I would like to stress out that we had in recent years some debates and great concerns about the level of support that Polish parents receive and that children and adults with disabilities and special educational needs receive from the government. Um, these concerns were uh, expressed by strikes of parents uh, who look after children and young adults uh, occupying ministry buildings for several days. And uh, this um, strike of parents with children and with people in their care um, continued until the government uh, decided that they will increase the allowance for carers. Um, there is an issue in Poland, like in many other countries, that there's a feminization of care. Uh, when we talk about uh, children and adults with disabilities and special educational needs who are unable to uh, exist independently. Uh, so this issue comes back over and over again. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, we feel uh, that the issue was not fully resolved. However, uh, on the positive side, most of our policies are governed by a document, um, a governmental document, um, which uh, which is called the Charter of Rights for Persons with Disabilities, uh, which was established in 1997, uh, and uh, the government has to report every year to same to our Polish Parliament about the progress on the implementation of this charter. Uh, this charter emphasizes that persons with disabilities have a right to an independent, autonomous and active life without any form of discrimination. And uh, the charter enumerates the rights. It looks quite short, as I'll show you on this slide, but it boils down to uh, the right to an independent, autonomous and active life not subjected to any form of discrimination and government is supposed to guarantee this uh, independent autonomous and active life so here are the points uh, there's 10 points in this charter uh, that pertain to the rights uh, the right to barrier free environment including access to public buildings transport information and means of communication for us the most interesting is the right to education uh, the, the right to work in an open labor market in adapted conditions and the right to participation 
in a public, social and cultural life. The right to education is further secured by um, the Ministry of Education under the Act on Education System, uh, which was also uh, ratified and implemented in 1997. So it has quite a long tradition. It has been updated several times with uh, feedback received from parents and teachers and special pedagogues. Um, the the um, Act on Education System uh, it provides children with disabilities with early childhood development support uh, early intervention, uh, diagnosis, uh, so the, at first contact with, uh, with either the health service or the education services, um, there should be uh, a diagnosis and a support uh, for the child and the parents. Uh, so education in all types of schooling, uh, uh, according to the individual developmental and education needs and predispositions, is guaranteed adaptation of the content of uh, learning uh, materials and methods the organization of education to adapt it to the intellectual and physical capabilities uh, of uh, students uh, is guaranteed as well as the possibility to use psychological and pedagogical aid and specially um, special rehabilitation activities uh, and there is a, a possibility to prolong every stage of education and to adjust assessment of knowledge and qualification in adapted forms and conditions um, uh, at every stage of, uh, of education. Uh, children uh, with uh, special educational needs have also rights to free accommodation in a special educational pedagogical center uh, free transport to and from school and rehabilitation and assistance uh, to school or special centre. Um, although there is no distinctive law for the children and youth uh, with um, IDD uh, or mental health issues, the latter includes this specific group of beneficiaries who may either represent the students with special educational needs who are entitled to individual classes of five students uh, per class with a multi-specialist team uh, uh, assessing uh, the, the situation and being involved working with both students and their parents uh, or represent students who are not covered by special education uh, but encounter difficulties in functioning in a peer group despite ability to attend uh, the general standard school. Uh, there is also uh, a possibility to uh, provide an in-class assistant, uh, assistant, usually a special pedagogue, uh, together with counselling and psychological and pedagogical uh, support for a child with diagnosis of special educational needs. Uh, the, however, the decision on uh, choosing a school uh, is a parent's decision. They, they uh, take that decision based on recommendations uh, made by specialists, but uh, at the end of the day, it's the parents who decide. And here I'd like to ask you uh, after this presentation to perhaps uh, watch an interview with a Polish parent uh, who actually studies at our university and who is a mother of two uh, children with um, Asperger. And uh, she talks about her experience of the services of support in education and also of the challenges that she's facing uh, as a mother of two children with special educational needs, one uh, severe and one mild. Uh, here is uh, quite an old work on um, different policies pertaining to uh, supporting uh, children uh, with uh, special educational needs and uh, people with disabilities. And there are two, um, let's say, um, on a scale, there are two um, corners. Uh, one is uh, more of an integration policy and the other one is more of a comp compensation policy. And Poland, uh, is kind of on the verge of both, but leaning more still towards the compensation policy. Uh, so here are the types of schools available uh, to uh, children in Poland. Uh, as I said, based on parents' decision, uh, kids can attend the mainstream school where they assisted, 
um, there are special inclusive classes and there are also uh, general mainstream classes, there are integration classes and there are integration schools. Uh, there are also special schools that usually specialize in one uh, or two kinds of disability of spe or special educational needs. For example, there are special schools for the blind and visually impaired, there are schools for the deaf and, and hearing impaired, um, there are schools for IDD uh, children, uh, schools for children with physical disabilities uh, that are severe, and also for any kind of uh, ill children with prolonged illnesses who are schooled at hospital. Uh, so there are these uh, special units at hospitals with teachers and special educators and counselors who provide ongoing education to kids who have to remain in hospital. And here is some uh, basic uh, statistics from Poland about the percentage of children who attend mainstream uh, education at the ages of three, four and five at school year 2015-16. So, uh, so as you see, this is the numbers of children who are entering the education system at the age of three, four and five in nurseries and kindergartens. Uh, and 80% um, um, of children with disabilities attend uh, mainstream pre-primary -prim settings and only 20% attend special pre-primary settings. Usually it is to do with the severity of the condition. And in 2015, 33% of Polish children of preschool age received uh, educational uh, support. I need to think what else I'd like to tell you about statistics to not bore you to death. Uh, here are some statistics from uh, from mainstream public schools, uh, from primary schools, uh, special schools, integrational schools and general schools, lower secondary schools that have been actually uh, uh, removed from the Polish education system recently and we're now moving on to the old-fashioned style education where we have eight years in the primary school or elementary school and then we move straight into the secondary school that lasts four years followed by a university level education so there has been an ongoing reform which is slightly unsettling for both parents and the children uh, of the education system in poland and also we are currently under uh, chain of reforms for the higher education in Poland um, but uh, we hope that this will all result in greater um, inclusion and a greater access to education. Um, there are some changes in terminology. Uh, Eastern Europe is uh, has quite a bad name for using terminology from olden days and uh, terminology from medical sciences we are now moving away from this uh, towards new ways of describing the diversity uh, in our societies. Uh, and um, I, I prepared um, a, a number of little videos for you to watch after this presentation. And one of them uh, pertains to a campaign in, uh, entitled Not Special Needs uh, that was initiated in Britain and um, it was drawing people's attention to the fact that actually uh, special needs are not so special after all, they're just human needs and that it, it's all about human rights and inclusion. I've also prepared two links for YouTube videos that show the situation uh, uh, of uh, Polish uh, activists uh, with disabilities uh, and a video that shows some new uh, inventions uh, uh, for children uh, with a severe uh, level of disability. So I would like you to, uh, to um, watch this video after uh, my presentation. Uh, I, I want only to, um, to, to conclude uh, with uh, asking you actually to join us uh, in the virtual Warsaw. Uh, in the virtual city of Warsaw, uh, Warsaw of Janusz Korczak, the hub of children's rights and uh, social inclusion. And this year, actually, we can do it in a really simple way uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, our summer school is going to take place 
only online uh, and therefore I suppose might be even more accessible than usual. Uh, there's still time to enroll, to participate uh, for 10 days in an exciting adventure, a trip to uh, to Warsaw, which is at the verge of Western and Eastern Europe, two different traditions, uh, Western Eastern tradition, and uh, the, the prominent figure of Janusz Korczak is at the core of this year's UNESCO Summer School. We already have confirmed participants from uh, all over the world, including, for instance, India, Pakistan, Brazil, Argentina, uh, UK, Germany, um, Nigeria, I, I can't remember them all, but you're all very welcome to join us as well uh, to meet the Polish teachers, uh, Polish special educators and Polish social pedagogues. Uh, so if you visit our website at www.aps.edu.pl slash um, EN as for English, uh, there will be all the information about how to join us. You can also find us on Facebook under JK um, Janusz Korczak, Chair in Social Pedagogy. Uh, so um, this is like a brief communication about the policy in Poland. The reality is that um, parents still feel that they could be better supported and they could have um, more um, relief from care. Uh, they really hoping that the government will come up with more temporary care solutions so they would be able to, to have the day for themselves or the afternoon for themselves, uh, that they will be able to look after their own health in that time and, and uh, perhaps even a part, maintain a part-time job. Uh, this is especially important for the issue that I mentioned at the beginning, which is the, is the feminization of care, uh, uh, especially uh, when we talk about adult uh, children uh, with special educational needs uh, with disabilities who are not able to live uh, independently within the community. There were several projects uh, of supported living within the community where uh, the, uh, the the idea relies heavily on neighbors. So uh, there is the activization of uh, the whole network of ne of neighbors who are to support an adult with special educational needs in living independently in a safe uh, community environment. However, this it, it seems to be a very challenging solution for a long term uh, solution. So uh, we are still looking for alternatives. I'm very interested to hear uh, what alternatives there might be uh, in your context, in your country. Mm, for, for us, the main focus is on educating parents and educating teachers, support staff uh, who in, has any contact with teachers, how to recognize uh, any form of neglect, uh, any kind of violence that the child might experience, or any form of special educational need that have been overlooked. And this is kind of our mission to identify, uh, to be able to provide early intervention, both for the child and the family, and to support child and family in their normal natural environment, not taking the child out of their context, not taking the child out of their family, but supporting them there uh, within their network and trying to build additional net of support. Uh, in cities, uh, it is actually easier because uh, everything is closer, public transport is excellent, there are specially uh, adjusted buses uh, and vans that um, can bring children uh, and adults with disabilities to the centers where they enjoy therapy and after school activities. But in villages, the situation is much more difficult because uh, in remote locations, there is hardly any on-site support. Um, it is expensive to send in the um, rehabilitation staff 
uh, and uh, there's always a debate who's going to pay for the transport for that person uh, also transporting children to special education facilities from the villages is more challenging but uh, the local governments in most places in poland are trying to provide equal access and the transport uh, when possible however in the eastern side of Poland, which is a slightly wealth, less wealthy side of Poland, there are still issues with uh, children missing out on opportunities to be fully integrated into educational system, and they may still experience some isolation and the lack of services. Uh, and these um, differences between village, city, and which part of Poland you live in, have significant impact on functioning of the whole family. On the bright side, uh, I'm now talking stereotypically, uh, in the eastern side of Poland, uh, there is still a much more reliance on multi-generational families and the close network of families. There's much less mobility, uh, so at least uh, the families uh, try to uh, provide support within each other's uh, networks but uh, it is not fully uh, fair uh, that the system does not help everybody the same no matter the location and no matter the background so this is me telling you about the policy in poland and the issues we face and uh, now I'll be prepared to take some questions, but I also want to advertise a video, another video, uh, which is a 20 minute interview with a leading Polish specialist, uh, a psychotherapist, uh, trained psychologist, who supports children and adults with uh, mental issues, with psychological problems, uh, for the last 20 years, uh, she's been practicing and um, we managed to, 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 to get an interview with her, which we translated for you. Uh, so if you want to see the perspective of the uh, psychotherapist on the issues that children face, uh, please watch this 20 minute video, uh, which is available on YouTube and the link should be communicated under our today's video. So thank you very much, and I wait for your questions. You can't hear any questions, unfortunately. Um, the the chat is in spanish and my spanish is not very good i can do italian a little bit of portuguese but spanish sorry it's on the list okay i think it says that there are no questions at the moment from what i can decipher from the chat maybe we we leave a few minutes uh for, for for questions and if they come i will answer them in the meantime i want to thank you for your attention and i hope that you will visit us in the virtual city of warsaw the city of korczak for the unesco summer school uh, in september thank you
There's a request for Laura to turn the mic on. No, we can't hear you, Laura. We can see you, but we can't hear you. can't hear you, Laura. It's always the technical difficulties. Can you hear me now? Yes. Are we still live? <laughs> so I have been, I have been talk, talking the whole, whole time saying thank you to Juana who has been interpreting for us. Thank you so much, Juana, for all, um, all your work. Um, I hope someone from YouTube tell us, please, if they can hear me. Someone just said yes, please. So yes, again, I was saying thank you, Juana Quinlan, for interpreting for us today. And thank you, Dr. Anna Coates. Um, this has been wonderful. Um, I think we don't have any questions, but there is a suggestion here that we will leave this video on so that people can ask questions after they watch the video all over again and the comments are going to be available for you to answer them um it's okay. been an amazing opportunity to have you with us and i hope a lot of people join you in the summer school um we are going to add the link in the comments or in the description so that people are interested and they can join you in um in the summer school Thank you so much. And again, this is live. So technological issues are part of this new normality after COVID-19. Thank you so much. Thank you.